You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for November 10th, 2017. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the headquarters of The Professional Left, where proactive cooperators still drink for free. We're talking to you, Carter Page. It's The Professional Left with Drip Glass and Blue Gal. We yeah he Carter Page is welcome on this podcast anytime. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think we might have to buy a little a few more uh, minutes on the podcast schedule. I think so from Buzzsprout. You know. I think so. Uh, just just sort of the rambling nonlinear uh-huh. leaps from. I don't think I ever uh, uh, stuck out that liquor store. I remember going into there with a gun, and a friend of mine had money afterwards, and I can't really say and. I'd like to take the fifth now. It, it's just, <laughs> it's it's so fucking weird. I but, mean, but you know, I think he is uh, just trolling everyone else in the Trump administration. Of now, first of all, maybe he's just stupid and doesn't realize anything. You know, he's just that's, high. This is, I, this is my theory. I, I, yeah. I've, I've advanced the theory that stupid Watergate, which we're now in, yeah. needs a stupid Martha Mitchell. Yeah. And now yeah. we have stupid Martha Mitchell who just can't keep his fucking mouth shut. And what he says is alternately insane and utterly incriminating mm-hmm. and incriminates everyone around him. Well, has it, all... it helped jog Corey Lewandowski's memory. Yes. I've been, I've refreshed my memory, you know, I cleared my memory cache mm-hmm. and my cookies and I'll call that porn out of there. Mm-hmm. And I suddenly realized, yeah, I, I was complicit in all this shit, but I had nothing to do with it. I told this crazy kid, he was delivering a sandwich from Jimmy John's. I remember like it was yesterday. He had a little paper hat on, came in and said, hey, hey, here's your Jimmy John's. By the way, I'm going to Russia. I said, who the fuck are you? I'm the guy that works for you. And then he went to Russia, and that's all I know. Uh-huh. And then CNN hired me, and then I went back to work for the Trump campaign while they were still paying me. Then I went back to work for CNN. Then I went back to work for Trump, and they fired me because I was getting handsy with the ladies and doing other weird no, shit. I and now I'm on your show. with the ladies. He yes. was G. Gordon Liddy and just grabbing people. Right, right. And, uh, I'm, a, I'm a thug. Yeah. Yeah, and now I'm on your it. show telling you my story. Right. Well, welcome to MSNBC, Corey Lewandowski. Yeah, okay. So, you know, <laughs> this is this is your media. Yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. why Carter Page is the perfect distillation of sort of giggling psychosis, cluelessness, and mm-hmm. absolute, you know, connective tissue between a whole bunch of people. If he serves no other purpose, mm-hmm. it will be that everyone around him now has to revise their story for the fifth fucking time. Right, right. And, and I... And I don't want to. Certain... I don't really want to turn our attention away from Trump Russia. Just realize that everything we're talking about has Trump Russia flowing underneath it like yes. a river. Yes, uh, we but have... we do need to get to the Virginia um, yes, election. Yes, we do. And... Well, elections everywhere. But yeah, Virginia everywhere. Especially. And, and there was an article today in Governing Magazine talking about how not just New Jersey, not just. Virginia, but um, little awesome. races and little special elections all over the country, uh, places where um, a Republican was unseated by women, by women, by women. And the uh-huh. uh, state house, I know it's not called a state house, it's a board of delegates or whatever it is in Virginia, they have a special name for it. Uh, they uh, were replacing Republicans. I think there were two men who were who won their races. Democratic uh-huh. men un- were were ushered into that body, uh-huh. uh, and the rest of the candidates were women. Yeah, and that is uh, a fascinating thing to see. And I I I have been toying and playing with words all day, Drift Glass. I know you do. Try to you... find a way to say this so that it doesn't offend anyone. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why have um, a blog if you're not going to offend yeah, anyone? Yeah, right. Why have a blog if you're not going to offend any? Well, and it's physically impossible to avoid offending everyone. Right. I have been thinking about the story of Jesus as literature, just as a literary motif. Having, and I'm not. I'm setting a, just setting aside any religious feeling that you might have about Jesus, any uh, place it might have in the history of the Christian canon, just looking at the Bible as literature. And this is not the Bible bitch means. section. No. This is the literary looking portion at of the, it. So. Looking at the Bible story of Jesus as literature. If it makes you comfortable, think of this as science fiction university. <laughs> it could be. Right. It could be. All right. And and there are science, there are 
literally scores of science fiction stories where a being of some variety with some sort of ability uh, passes away and his friends or followers or army or whatever it is uses that opportunity to go forward with his or her message Mm -hmm. and bring it into fruition, right? It's called the Foundation Trilogy. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Really, seriously. (laughs) Harry Seldon in the Foundation Trilogy. Exactly. Exactly. Yep, yep, yep. And so the Christ figure, as they call it, Uh is throughout literature of every stripe. Yes, Uh, true. And so I have been thinking about that in terms of the, the Clinton race last year. And did the dream of Hillary Clinton as president have to die in order for the disciples to get a kick in the ass to go and claim power? Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Uh and I don't, I, in fact, I know for a fact that not every woman running is a Clinton disciple. Right. In fact, a uh, guy who calls himself a democratic socialist get elected. Right. Um, we had a trans woman get elected and boy, that was, that, that in itself is a great story yeah. because uh, she used sidewalk issues, mm-hmm. 28, I will never forget the number 28 associating it with her because 28 is the road with the problems that everyone in her district knows is a problem. And the state legislator, the Republican state legislator, who's an asshole. Right. Well, that's, that's the top spin. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, the issues, this was such a perfect lesson. It's a perfect lesson. It really was. It really is. It was, it was her campaign was utterly divorced, if you will, Mm -hmm. from her sexual gender status right her campaign was about this local issue that we all really care about and we have to absolutely fix this thing and by the way i'm a transgendered person right her opponent was the number one fucking homophobe who wrote the bathroom bill in the state Mm -hmm. and who just kept acting like a dick because he couldn't help himself right because that's what bigots do they cannot control themselves and rather than strike back at him, which she had every right to do, and, I, and I'm sure she did from time to time, uh, in, in whatever way, because her, her, uh, her speech certainly did include these issues. But mm-hmm. she kept to her issue mm-hmm. and wouldn't be baited into a fight on his turf. And she kicked his ass. She did. Mm-hmm. She did. And, and now she has... A platform. She has an issue to work on. She does. Absolutely. And, and and part of this also was here he is writing bathroom bills and being a bigot and mm-hmm. not agreeing to debate her and continuing to use the male uh, pronoun about her and so forth and mm-hmm. just being a jackass. And the issue was he had done nothing about 28. He had done exactly. nothing about this road. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so you had people who probably would not have voted for transgender activists with lots of money from outside LGBT organizations outside. And that's the only issue this person is running on that Mm -hmm. would not have excited a voter base within this Virginia community. I, I don't think, um, but 28 excited everybody Mm -hmm. because everybody drives on that road and everybody knows what a mess it is. So, uh, and, and you could tell that she cared about it. Exactly. You could could tell that the, (laughs) Yeah, I live here, and this is a mess, and this this needs to be fixed. And her yard signs mentioned it, and so you saw that and said, "Oh." And if you're you're a zero information voter, you still drive on that road every day, mm-hmm. and it makes you mad. And I think we we want to so, make one thing clear that mm-hmm. identity is not divorced from politics. Honestly, at all, <laughs> it is absolutely not divorced from politics at all. At all, it is simply as a as a political strategy, mm-hmm. and in this particular case, especially. Um, the issue has to be something more than um, I'm a member of this group. It has well, to be. It I has mean, to be, yeah. Well, but, it, it can be you're a member of this group, but that group has to be the community. It yes. has to be, it's all of us living in this area and we have this problem and we have to fix it. And, or, uh, and it can be, I'm a member of a group, that group has been robbed of its civil rights for 100 years. Mm-hmm. And that's an, that, is a, that is an American tragedy. That's, an Amer- that's a failure of the American system. Mm-hmm. Nobody should be robbed of their voting rights. Nobody should be robbed of their rights and dignity as a human being. And we need politics to fix that because politics broke it. Right. That's a perfectly legitimate identity issue to run on because you, as an identifiable member of a group, 
are being actively deprived of what everybody else gets. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's and and you can and that's well, and an here's here's the issue with that, and th- and this goes back to um, the Democrats winning. There is only one party that is trying to take away voting rights from large groups of people. There is only one party that is trying to stop health insurance from children. There's only one party (laughs) Mm -hmm. that thinks it's perfectly okay to have a war going on in Chad right now that nobody knew about. I mean, Mm -hmm. and I, I understand that Obama had troops there. I do understand that. But if you're talking about boots on the ground people mm-hmm. right now, the people who are saying that's OK because Trump's president and are excusing everything that is going on because Trump did it. That's only one party doing that mm-hmm. uh, over and over again. You can you can say that about the Republican Party. They are the ones doing this. And so there there is no choice. There was one person who tweeted something to the effect of I, I am going to vote exactly the way African-American women do. Yes. <laughs> our our uh, one of our dear friends, one of our dear friends, who's, yep. a, who's a son of a bitch. Yep, that's I mean, right. A, very, a friendly way, that a friendly son happy of a way. Bitch that's is, son of a bitch. The, how he is referred to in our house because he has been listening to us and corresponding with us for years since 2010. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he is said that I will vote the way African American women vote for the rest of my life. <laughs> Do you mean like the? Uh, first African American elected mayor of Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. women overall turned out sixty uh, percent for the Democratic candidate for governor. I do understand that the new governor of Virginia made some missteps, as far as I'm concerned, and maybe they are big missteps in terms of sanctuary cities. Yes, uh, that's an issue that is causing problems in our own community. It and... absolutely is. Yes, <laughs> and you're involved in that. I am. Uh, but here's the deal. It's going to be a 50-50 legislature, or very close. It may be a 51-49 legislature with the Democrats in the 49 part. Mm -hmm. The the Democratic governor of Virginia is going to need every single Democratic vote to get anything done. And he's probably going to need a couple Republican votes to get anything done. Yes, he will. Uh, That's the opportunity to push him to the left. Mm -hmm. And I... I noticed that Bernie Sanders' people are also uh, recruiting candidates and working to win elections. Uh, Was successful as well on Mm -hmm. Tuesday. Uh, Hillary Clinton is starting a super PAC to do the same thing. Uh, And um, the flippable people won five out of five of the people that they had recruited. Uh, So all of this together uh, is working. We got to get points on the table and get this government back. And then we can start fighting among ourselves about how to get where we want to go. And we will. And we're really, we're really, believe me, guys, even back when the primary started, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders voted together 93% of the time. Right. This is not complicated. Democrats are not uh, as divided as people would like you to think. You, you'd say that, but it is it is a fact that I learned from uh, Donna Brazil's book. Uh, <laughs> How can I make a lot of money off a book? I believe is a subtitle. Uh, just the timing was so perfect because you definitely yeah. want to lob a fragmentation grenade into the right. middle of an election where right. everything is in the balance, and you definitely want to hand you know a bunch of ammunition to Tucker Carlson, who then ha- will have you on your show, uh, well, and then and, we'll have and. and- the day after the election, she didn't she walk back the, the rigged I did, word? I, I believe I, she did. I use that word because Donald Trump used that word. Uh-huh. Are you for? Yeah. Because, you know, I, I heard the older boys using that word, and I used that word. Well, no, that's you, yeah. you, you're you a professional campaign person who spent a life as a communications expert. Yep. You picked that word for a reason. Now, I don't particularly care what that reason is, but you certainly did a lot of harm to a cause just by your timing. Mm-hmm. To a cause mm-hmm. that you purport to believe in. So I, I read in Donna Brazil's book that, that Hillary Clinton uh, cracks her eggs on the big end <laughs> and Bernie Sanders on the little end. And the big Indians and the little Indians cannot coexist, Blue Gal. That's just a fact. It's a known fact. Yep. Um, now, one other thing that's, that's we should put in, into the history book is, or the memory book, the biggest issue um, across the board was health care. And guns. Those, and and guns. guns. And and who, what do those two issues have in common, Blue Gal? Um, health moms. and safety and moms. moms. Yep. <laughs> moms. Yeah. This is the election. You said this in our in our home many times. Mm-hmm. This is this is the party that made mom cry. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is how this is how the Republican Party will be remembered 
30 years from now by people who are now in their 20s and teens. You're the people who made my mom cry. You're mm -hmm. the people who tried to take health care away from me. And my mom freaked out and was crying and terrified and didn't know what to do. And you had a fucking beer party to celebrate making my mom cry. Right. I will never vote for you people. Your people are fucking monsters. Of course, by that time, the GOP will be gone and be replaced wow. by some other big party. <laughs> Um, well, they're sure trying real hard. That that's where I wanted to go with this conversation next, yes. which is after these wins, after they're while they're rewriting, they they immediately start rewriting their language about right. the Republican Party, and yes. all of a sudden it's Trumpism law. Yes, yes, you should really read Blue Gal on this from last year, from last summer, <laughs> July of last July or August of last summer. I wrote, "Don't you dare call it Trumpism," because uh -huh. it was already happening back then. The New York Times was saying. What about Trumpism? What are we going to do about Trumpism? How is Trumpism going to... Can we fight Trumpism? It's not Trumpism. No. There's no such thing as Trumpism. This is the Republican base philosophy. Right. And Trump copied what he saw the Republican base wanted yes. and gave it to them. And so when, when he comes down the escalator and starts talking about Mexicans bring drugs and crime and rapists, and I'm sure some of them are very good people... Oh, I know. Good people. Yeah. A whole mass of Republican base primary voters said, oh, wow, he's saying what I'm thinking. He's saying what Sean Hannity told me that I exactly. believe. Exactly. And, and a million tiny pointed heads all swiveled in that direction said, wait a minute. He's saying what I hear. He's on very Fox smart. News. You know, he's My very God. smart. And he's rich. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's a good guy. Let's do that. He and, doesn't like oh he doesn't like Negroes or uppity women and he hates liberals. Oh my God, this is oh my, my guy. God, my dream. Yes. And and here was CNN. This is the video I used in this post from last summer, which by the way, you can just Google don't you dare call it Trumpism and right. you'll find it. It's there. <laughs> Uh, a focus group of Trump voters who he, where he had not won the nomination yet, you know, but, oh, he's saying what I'm thinking. Immigration is the number one issue on my mind. And uh, we need to build that wall. That's really what we need to do is build a wall. Well, those they, those people didn't just fall off a truck into the Trump campaign. No, they voted for uh, John McCain and Sarah Palin. And Pat Buchanan, they, you know, they voted for Pat Buchanan. <laughs> yeah, they, vo they voted for uh, Mitt Romney. Yeah. Uh, held their held their nose and voted for Mitt Romney and sat on election night in 2012, believing that f the Fox News lies that Romney was going to win in a landslide. Remember that? Oh, I do vividly. And they don't. They, they don't, don't. But I do. But but they do. They uh, remember on, that yeah. Fox lied to them. That's what they remember. Yep, yep. And they're furious about it. And they were embarrassed by by their votes for Bush because Bush was failed so spectacularly. They were embarrassed by their vote for Bush after so Bush was out of office. Fo right, and so Fox News created the Tea Party for them, and yes, a whole bunch did. of of uh, astroturf funders created the Tea Party. Now we're Tea Party. I'm not Republican. I'm Tea Party. So here we have, and I wrote a post yesterday, and so did you. Yes, yes. Uh, a post about this Trumpism thing again, because Tuesday night and Wednesday morning, it was all, this is a rejection of Trumpism. Headline after headline after headline in every publication from Newsweek to the Washington Post, to the New York Times, to the U.S. News World Report, to crooked media, who should mm -hmm. goddamn well know better, mm -hmm. uh, was all about Democrats versus Trumpism. Yeah. No, it's Democrats versus Republicans, asshole. You they, have no you have no right as a liberal ever to say Trumpism any more than you would say death tax. Right. Or there tea party. is no such thing. That is a lifeboat for Republicans. Mm -hmm. It's it's a reverse of the Tea Party, right? Right. You made you took Republicans and said, Okay, you guys are Tea Party now. We're we're not gonna you don't have to admit you're Republicans. Now it's Republicans, you stay right here. We're gonna put all the bad stuff that doesn't win elections over on Trump and call it Trumpism. Right. And you stand here and when Trump goes away, you'll be here and you'll be Republicans. But that Trumpism went away and now you're all clean mm -hmm. does not work. It is a lifeboat. We are going to burn the lifeboats. I don't care if, what what they call us. <laughs> Robespierre. Was that what you said the other day? Oh, yeah. No, it was uh, 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 David Brooks. Uh, I believe. No, no. Is Michael Gerson. Michael Gerson. He's basically oh, the backup auxiliary David Brooks in yeah. the media. Former Bush speechwriter, senior Republican uh, advisor to George Bush, helped, did his part to lie us into the Iraq war and keep mm -hmm. George Bush in office for eight years, is now furious that his party is blah, blah, blah. But, of course, 
the left is just as bad. What with our, mm-hmm. our, our we're being infiltrated by Robespierre's and abortion on demand and our our single payer health care rhetoric. That's dividing this country, blue gal. It's dividing it right down the middle. And you know who stepped into that breach to heal us all? Yes. Uh, no labels? Yes. Who now have two <laughs> new carnival barkers. Yep. Uh, they have Susan Collins and Joe Manchin, who are now on every fucking camera you can you can see it in every headline. I've heard on the radio three times today. saw it on television twice. You know, this no labels thing, it's the extremes in Congress on the far left and far right that are ruining this country, blue gal. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. for all of the many, 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 many posts I've written uh, and futilely pissed into the abyss about the Republican base being rigid, ideologically um, uh, nuts, uh, completely impervious for reason, write them off. They're dead from the neck up. Both siders are just as bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they hide out in the middle and pretend that they're flexible, but they're not. They have no set of beliefs at all other than both sides are equally wrong. Right. That's the only thing they believe. It's like Republicans only believe tax cuts will solve everything. Mm-hmm. Everything else is fucking window dressing. The only thing scumbags mm-hmm. like Joe Manchin believe, um, who we, whose vote we need, I'm not going to deny it, but the only thing these people believe is that I need to I need to decry both sides because if if I don't, And if anybody ever figures out that the problem with this country is the Republican Party and only the Republican Party and that the Democrats are actually where the healthy political debate is going on and figure out that I've been complicit in empowering the worst people in America for decades, we're all going to be we're all going to be on the firing line together. So let's all pretend that there's a far left that's equally bad to the far right. And we'll sit, we'll squat in the middle and pretend that we we want none of it. We want to be in the center. We want to be in the middle. And that is such, this was a punchline in 2006. Exactly. This exactly. was a joke. Yeah. This was a liberal joke in 2006. Really? really? When Tom Friedman was rubbing his hind legs together, squawking about how the left got Iraq wrong and the right did. And how can, how can we can't have a reasonable discussion about it? People were laughing at him because he's like, fuck you. Are you insane? Don't you read your own goddamn newspaper? And yet the the single most persistent toxin in our body politic is both the Republican base, who, who the Republican Party has been lying about, their, their, their traits, you know, the, the existence of such people, the Republican Party has dedicated itself to lying about, and the both siders are dedicated to lying about them too. Because I would every, like to know who these extreme leftists are in the U.S. Senate who aren't going to do anything. They're never mentioned. They're never mentioned. They yep. never – and nobody ever asks. That's right. the tell. Right. The right. tell is right. no reporter will ever say, who exactly are these extreme leftists who are the same as – Breitbart and who are the same as Sean Hannity and who are well, the even, same. I don't even care. I don't need to talk about Hannity or Breitbart. No. I want to know in the House of Representatives, in the Senate, right. who are the extreme leftists who are who causing the Roy so Moore's trouble? on the left, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Who, who, are, who, who are the people? Who is, who is now a nominee right. of the Republican Party in Alabama? And I know he's he's. Really uh, hit the bricks today with yeah, the, uh, he hit a brick wall today with uh, these revelations about uh, like like in the underage girls back yes. when he was thirty. I know it's a long time ago, yeah. but, uh, but still built your career on a Bible. The, the universe the universal response at al dot com, which is the Alabama news website, was won't make a difference to his base. No, you know you can shoot somebody in Fifth Avenue, you can rape a fourteen year old, you can. Uh, have her in your house and pretend you're a babysitter while you're trying to get in her pants on the right. sofa, mm-hmm. and you're th- in your 30s and she's 14, and uh, you know, nope, you've got a he's, R after your name and you can't stop yabbering about the Ten Commandments. You're in. Well, he's you saved. Know? He's a good Christian man. He's been saved. You know, we're all sinners, blue gal. You well, know, we're all sinners. And, and my enemies will use this against me. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's the argument. So but this, this is this yeah. this part of the discussion. Um, I, I really think not between you and I, but mm-hmm. in among liberals who we talk to, among liberals who listen to this podcast, we we also really need to um, block off the center mm-hmm. and explain mm-hmm. to people centrists are just as toxic, just as dishonest, just as fucking cowardly, just as big a liars as the average Republican voter. Repo- average Republican voter is brainwashed. They're too dumb to know any better. Mm-hmm. They, they, mm-hmm. The, the, the people who sit in the middle of a dead coal town and vote against their own interest year after year 
And and when nothing ever happens, when it turns out Donald Trump's been lying, they just go, well, I knew he was lying, but I hoped he'd be, I hoped he wouldn't. Right. People who actively reject job training that might and actually science, save them. And science, yes, yes. And sign up for, for courses that will never get them anywhere because those people, I feel pity for them. I feel sorry for them. I feel like they are a third world country in my country and we should help them. But we shouldn't allow them to make decisions about policy because they're unfit to do that. But the fuckers in the center, the people in the middle, the David Brookses, the Michael Gersons and the, and everybody on Morning Joe. I listened to the Mike Lupica podcast today for 10 minutes. I listened to Mike Barnacle you know, go on and on about this for, for 20 fucking minutes about, you know, you know, there's the Atlantic and Pacific coast, but you know where most people live? They live in the middle. You know, just let me just tell you, these are good people. And he just went on and on. And then Mike Lupic is patting his head going, yeah, Mike, yeah, Mike, that's right, Mike. Yeah, you're right, Mike. And those people at some level know better at some they level. Know because they're catering to. Well, it, it's right. when, in the first sentence, they talk about how, um, you know, we have to reach out and we have to be everywhere and, and, and calling people names and calling them deplorable and pointing out that and, and, and isolating people because most people live in the center, Blue Gal. Most people just want to live in the center and be moderate. In the next paragraph, they'll scratch the head and go, you know, there's 30 percent of this country that will vote for Donald Trump if he kills someone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You cannot reconcile those two statements. Right. But right. so at some basic me metabolic level, mm -hmm. people like Joe Scarborough and Mike Barnacle know they're lying. Right. They absolutely know they're lying and they're all telling the same lie and they're all telling it for the same reason. Because if we ever start talking honestly about politics in this country, every single fucking one of them is out of a job. Yep. And yep. That, that they will not. And when you own the cameras and you own the microphones and you own the networks and you own the journalists, you get to say what we're going to talk about. Yeah. And that's why we own a podcast. So I'm sorry. I got off on my uh, soapbox there. And I'm I've got to ask you a question, which is it's about. Saving face as a voter, yeah. because I I do understand and I do have a certain amount of sympathy for someone who voted the wrong way long ago when they were younger or uh -huh. last election or sure. whatever and wakes up and says, wow, I really screwed that one up mm -hmm. and I'm not going to make that mistake again. And we have seen voters like that, voters who were behind Bush all the way and then went to Iraq as a soldier and come back and say, never again, dude, right. I'm, I'm can't, I'm collecting signatures for every Democrat who, who runs for office from now on, because I see the light. This is not, they lied to us right. and I'm not going to be lied to again. So right. I'm done with welcome, Bush. Hey, I'm done with Republicans. Hey, you get to those, save face, right? Those people are my people. Right. Yeah. You get to save face. The person that came to your party last month drunk and barfed on your porch mm -hmm. and comes to work the next morning and, hey, man, I screwed up. I'm really sorry. I, I will pay to have your porch cleaned. You know, I'm, sure. I did a bad thing. You get to save face. Sure. You do it again next weekend. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is the problem. And the stakes are so much higher than barf on a porch. You're talking about my children's health insurance. Yeah. And you're and you're on Twitter saying things like, well, you know, Barack Obama brought the Muslim Brotherhood into the White House. I think it's okay for Donald Trump to bring his own family in. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. this is, you don't get to ever save face with me mm -hmm. because when the stakes, when it came down to people having health insurance and you decide to spout lies about somebody who's not president anymore, first of all, right. and lies about Hillary Clinton, who's never going to be president. Right. And that is your comfort blanket mm -hmm. that you use against my children's health insurance, right. there's no saving face for you. No. But it is the job of Mike Barnacle to make sure that those people are always able to save face. Right. And that's the lifeboat situation. Except and, and, except the, the, the alibi, the get out of jail free card that they mm -hmm. deal from the bottom of the deck to all of those people mm -hmm. are also picked up by Crazy Uncle Liberty. Right. And every time right. Crazy Uncle Liberty... Another Fox News. This is the 178,000th Fox News lie that has blown up mm -hmm, in your face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Are you going to learn now? Well, you know, liberals are just as bad. Boom. Yep. And he's off to the, yep. to, the, to the next Fox lie. He, that person cannot be saved. They can be pitied. They can be taken care of. They, they, we can have a country in which they can live and prosper, and that's great. But they, you are absolutely wasting your time 
I'm not just arguing with them. You're wasting mm -hmm. your time pretending that they're somehow just an anomaly, that they're mm -hmm. somehow just a fluke. No, that's the Republican base. And um, uh, can I divert into a little story and then come back? Uh, you you do that after I tell this, this okay. little story because right. something just came across my screen that's going to make you smile. All right. Election night, Tuesday night, we were watching the returns and uh, Chris Hayes and uh, Rachel Maddow, right, right before Rachel Maddow came on, uh, Chris Hayes announced that the governor's election in Virginia was over and the Democrat had won. Right. And you said, and then Donna Brazil was on. Right. And so we switched over to see what Fox was doing. Yes. I saw a little bit of Donna Brazil and sh she was rolling her eyes that people were going to blame her if the Republican had won. Right. And then she stopped and said, I congratulate, you know, everyone who wins tonight, uh, I congratulate them. And so she was congratulating the Democratic Party for winning the governorship in Virginia. We mm -hmm. switched to Fox. Yep. <laughs> what do we see? What do we see? You go ahead and explain it. Nobody can explain it as well as you can. Would you like to know? <laughs> Who is on Fox with Tucker Carlson, Blue Gal? Uh, Glenn Greenwald. Glenn Greenwald. Yes. We switched over to see, hey, how's Fox handling this? And Glenn Greenwald... Uh, who I'm going to just do the I told you so dance one time uh, at some point in the future <laughs> just to get it out of my system. Right. Because right. Glenn Greenwald, who has never been a friend of liberals, mm -hmm. who has always been operating out of his own political agenda, our interests were aligned for a number of years. And he's mm -hmm. a he's a good writer and a good lawyer. But he absolutely is running his own agenda, which has nothing to do with your health care or your Social Security or your minimum wage or your civil rights or anything like that. None of that shit interests him at all. He has his own thing. So apparently, and this is this has now happened often enough where Glenn Greenwald is now Tucker Carlson's wacky neighbor. Yeah. He, he's on there frequently enough to be the guy you, you bring in to say, even a liberal like Glenn Greenwald. So he's yeah. sort of like Alan Combs without Alan Combs. Uh, he's like, it's now instead of Sean Hannity, uh, Hannity and Combs, it's now Hannity and Hannity because Tucker and, and, and Glenn are just laughing it up, talking about Well, and Tucker know. does his frowny face of, but wait a minute, aren't you a liberal? And I'm agreeing with everything you say. You're saying the hmm. Democratic Party is hopelessly corrupt and should be destroyed and burned to the ground? Oh, that's really weird coming from a liberal such as yourself, Glenn. Well, you know... Donna Brazil's pretty much exposed all the corruption I've been writing about all my life. And then he takes his right. dick out and waves right. it around. And, and here is Donna Brazil on MSNBC congratulating the Democratic right. Party and you switch. And here is Glenn Greenwald. Well, the punchline to that is yeah. just now Stephanie Rule yes. uh, reported on um, what Fox is saying this afternoon. Yes. Fox is doing a segment about how the MSM isn't covering Donna Brazil. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I I saw that coming. Yes, no, that not, she she mentioned that it's not you know, a single not one, network, not, not a, a single, single network. network committed one minute to these claims. Right. And, and Stephanie Rule says that's a lie. No, she is so good about saying that's a lie on Twitter. She's yeah. she's she taken a ripped a page out of Joanne Reed's book, and she will just on Twitter she'll just that's say it. This is a lie. Yeah. Donna Brazil did an interview with Morning Joe, and it was heavily promoted. She is always welcome on my show. And she was on Chris Hayes on election night. and <laughs> But no one on Fox is ever going to see that, right? Right. Never. So, ever. Uh, That's all they know. They're trying to, the, 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 the mainstream media is in collusion. Collusion. You hear me that? There's the real collusion. In collusion with the Democrats to silence Donna Brazil. No. Who has now, <laughs> who has now uh, uh, walked back her uh, rigging. As we've her rigging and 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 uh, blocked everybody who pointed out that Bernie Sanders signed the same agreement Hillary Clinton did, yeah, we, we don't and uh, got her picture taken with Sheriff uh, Big Cat of Fox Sheriff News. Clark. They were just both <laughs> smiling and looking so happy to be in each other's company because that's yeah. that's a that's a happy crew over there at Fox. You know, Glenn Greenwald and Clark and. Sheriff Gorka <laughs> and Pam Geller, you know, that whole crew and of, Brazil. of fascist misfits who make up right. the worst propaganda network since the Third Reich. And there's Donna Brazil happily trotting her book out for them because, you know, who's going to buy a lot of books about about the Democratic Party being fucked up? And Everyone on yeah. Fox. Right. Everyone on Fox. Right. That, that is a gar that's a ka-ching right there. That's a sale right there. And the fact that you have to go there. Oh, well, that's and... interesting. I hadn't thought of that, but that's true. Oh, yeah. Because liberals don't buy books that reinforce their worldview, but conservatives no. constantly do. No, we, we are 
happy to uh, clean up and and reform and transparentize. Yeah. I'm, I'd mm -hmm. be thrilled if the reforms were actually put through. I'd love for you to, if you have to run a Democratic part uh, as a Democrat, you have mm -hmm. to actually be a Democrat mm -hmm. for like mm -hmm. a minute at least. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, and you, look, and you're, you've got to show me your tax returns for, for the last six that, years. That's the other one. Is, and, yeah. and that's got to that's got to that's a both sider thing. Sure. That's got to happen. And not only if you're running for president, you have to show 10 years of tax returns. But if you're going to work in the White House at any cabinet level or presidential advisor mm -hmm. uh, level, because we've seen that with yep. Wilbur, uh, Wilbur, 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 yeah, and and uh, and, and everyone else that, uh, you know, not not to mention Kushner. Yeah, uh, <laughs> just they're just they're where just, your money is matters. They're just thieves. Yeah, yeah. And so if you know your your tax returns need to be public. Yeah. And that protects everybody. And that that is also a sign that you have been interested in public service for more than this minute. They have a whole. It's possible to do it, but we need public servants who will who will do the right thing, and they need those in the Democratic well, Party. Well, and and, okay. and here's here's my little side story. Uh -huh. uh, very local. Yeah. This happened here. Um, mm -hmm. we, I, I, I'm a member of a bunch of groups, and we talk about politics because politics is how it gets, things get done. And we, I, we, I got into the middle of a conversation a couple of times with a couple of groups that is remarkably similar. I, I brought a lot of podcast and blogging and talking with my wife um, history mm -hmm. to those discussions. Mm -hmm. Because there, there were one group of very, very well-intentioned people who I, who I think are awesome. Who are confronted with a city council that is that is telling them that is floating a bunch of bullshit, mm -hmm. that's sort of tossing up a bunch of ridiculous objections to a very simple um, uh, uh, resolution. It doesn't even have the force of law. Simple resolution in my town, and uh, a lot of their objections are silly. Uh, some of them are just lies. But collectively, they're just like, what? What the hell's the problem here, man? This is not. This isn't complicated. This is just, you know, this is declaring that. That the Southeast High School softball team is great. It has mm -hmm, exactly mm -hmm. that much that force of law, and yet the city council flipped out and and wouldn't touch it because it involved immigration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, one group of people, one of the the people who were uh, running this thing, saw this sort of an article about this in the paper and wrote a very long, a very thoughtful rebuttal to everything they said in the newspaper. And they were they were represented by people who the Yabut people. If mm. I just give them the facts, if I just keep showing them mm. over and over again that what they believe is factually incorrect, eventually they will be persuaded. And there were other people there going, you don't understand these people at all. You don't understand politics. It's not your fault. This is not. This is new to you. Facts bounce off these people. They don't care. What you say is irrelevant. If it runs on for more than four words, they tune you out. Um, there, there's a way to win this argument, but, but continuing to present people who clearly don't give a shit about facts with facts is a waste of everyone's time, especially your time, because you, you know, you are a good liberal who have a limited amount of time and energy. And if you're continually pissing your time and energy away, trying to persuade people who are unpersuadable, then you're wasting your time. Move on to politics. How do you get things passed? How do you get people elected? How do you get votes passed? And we went back and forth in both of these groups and Eventually, it came down to, well, maybe the problem isn't city council. Maybe the problem are the voters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's when I said, now you're talking. Yep, what if yep. the problem is that the base voter in this community are just shitty people who just, you know, maybe the, the reason people get along so well is, is uh, that we, we don't talk about really important things. Because every time something important comes up, everyone freaks out and goes to their corners. And maybe the problem is um, a lot of your neighbors listen to Sean Hannity every night. And they listen to Fox News and they're real nice about it, but that's what they believe. And if you think you can go over to them with a bunch of facts in your hand, you can do this with a, with a sidewalk, with a stop sign, with a barbecue, anything that's completely non-threatening to their ideology. But the minute you bring something up that crosses into their ideological territory, you will discover that a whole bunch of people that are voters in this country – are also Fox News viewers and hate mm -hmm. radio listeners and are absolutely not interested in the single fucking thing you have to say. And then you fall into the liberal trap of thinking you can reason with them. You cannot reason with them. 
you can embarrass them. You can <laughs> you can provoke them. You can find other people who are disinterested, who are apathetic, and bring them in and outnumber them, which is basically what happened in Virginia. But you're never going to – the people who voted for Donald Trump in Virginia, who voted Ed Gillespie in Virginia, are never going to change their mind. Never. Because it involves a whole psychological uh, unraveling. They have to admit they were wrong about Gillespie, and they were wrong about Trump, and they were wrong about liberals. And holy shit – I've been an idiot my entire life, and no one's going to do that. And the analogy I've used before is, you know, my dad was an alcoholic till the day he died. And yeah. my dad was never going to admit he was an alcoholic till the day he died. Because to admit he was an alcoholic would be to admit maybe his marriage fell apart because he was a drunk. And maybe his career choices were poor because he was a drunk. And maybe a whole bunch of things in his life that he blames on – now we're going to flip the analogy over – blames on liberals and immigrants and whatever are actually his own fault. And there's no way on God's earth that he was going to allow that to happen because it would shatter his personality. Now multiply that by 60 million and you get Trump voters. Yep. And there's the problem. They're never going to admit that they were wrong because you pull on that thread and the whole thing comes down. And at some level, they realize that. And the the second thing we talked about was um, – oh, hold on a second. I lost. Uh, I want. I want to talk about Michael Gerson and yeah. why he why he feels that uh, we're Robespierre. Because he's Catholic, and that's all he knows. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were talking about you wanted to haul out the guillotines, and I don't want to hurt, haul out the guillotines and no. hurt anybody. I just want their careers to be dead. Right. And I want their party to be dead. Right. And I want their media to be dead. Mm -hmm. And I want their media to be so dead that. I want to piss on the ashes. I mean, right. this this is the untouchables. <laughs> That's what I want. I want to piss on the ashes of Breitbart and Trump News and Fox News. Trump News, mm -hmm. which is what it is. Okay, uh, Drip Glass. Yes. What do you want to do? Um, I think we should step uh, boldly forward into discussing the details about Trump Russia just a little bit. Okay. Because it sure has been a fun week. <laughs> um, this, Congratulations this to all the Democrats who won. By the way, all the first time women office holders mm -hmm. were behind you uh one guy uh as i i went and looked for maga uh tweeters on election night and uh, one of them accused us democrats of being smug and i said uh we're smug for one night but tomorrow morning we got a whole binders of policy we want to pass because we know how we to do. govern we do. <laughs> you know what uh, so I'm not smug, but could I borrow your fuck your feelings T-shirt that you were wearing at your Trump <laughs> rally to wipe my ass? Could you mind if I borrow that? Can I borrow that? That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to thank the podcast listener who sent a hat to Junior Dude. Yes, which he will not be wearing anywhere. To, to call it. He won't be wearing to church. No. He won't... <laughs> No. It's a Trump hat. It's a it, red hat with white lettering on it, and it said, resign, motherfucker. Uh -huh. And uh, so we appreciate that. We got some science fiction books in the mail. We did. And we did. Uh, I want. I forgot to add, thank Raymond. We got, I forgot to mention that Raymond sent me a copy of Tammy and the Bachelor. Ah, that's movie. right. That's right. My, I'm going to knit to that movie. Yeah. Uh, and someone sent us some science fiction books and a book on Richard Feynman and a Monty Python DVD. Thank you for that. And we we appreciate all those in kind gifts. Thank you. I got and, and so, I got a bunch of Christmas uh, Christmas uh, birthday stuff. You got a bunch of birthday stuff. Birthday in the contributions room, here and there, you know, and uh, some buying some, your bottle scotch. Well, yeah. and some uh, some gelt was uh, slipped into my pocket. Yeah. Some lettuce, some mazuma, uh, yeah, very was nice. sent my way, and I, I will be getting thank you emails out to everyone who did ha, that ha, because ha, every, yeah, we're, everyone we're, deserves. We're trying to. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to get into too much detail about it, but um, our health insurance costs are going way up next year, yeah. and a lot, along with a lot of other people's. Yeah. We lost we lost part of our subsidy because we had a pretty good year. We worked hard huh. and made a little more money than we made the year before, and so we lost part of our subsidy. And then um, the cost on the exchange uh, went up from $1,300 a month. This is the non-subsidized cost on the right. exchange. Right. Uh, went up. From thirteen hundred dollars a month to twenty two hundred dollars a month. Thanks, Donald. Yeah. Yep. Um, and obviously that's not what we're gonna pay, but uh, our cost is gonna more than double. Yep. Um, yep. Ser seriously, and uh, we're a little concerned about that. But uh, that is that is a very different problem to have than the one we had where they took away our food stamps in two thousand eight because your uninsurance or your um, my unemployment check your unemployment insurance was too high. Right. <laughs> 
No, we so... have we have we have the same problems you you guys do. Um, we're we're probably living pretty much the same life you're living in a different geographic location. We are extraordinarily privileged. We are extraordinarily blessed. We are very lucky. We are. Um, we are. But you know, it's it is really swimming with a brick in both hands. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. and yep. and yep. if this were the result of some natural disaster or some yeah. historical oh, trend yeah. of, of which we had yeah. no control, that's one thing. This is all man-made. This is all something that some people, group of people, are doing to us. Right, and um, deciding. Yeah. You know, the the, yeah. uh, the end of my post today um, was because I was comparing the the Bush plan for Iraq with the Trump plan for America, and they're identical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely yeah. identical. Yeah. It, it's, you yeah. know, it's yeah, that's amazing. It's destroy the government, loot the place, put your cronies in charge and put an insane tax plan in place. And and I want to remind people the number one economic problem we were having during the 2000 election uh, domestic economic issue was what to do with the budget surplus. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? That lockbox ain't looking so stupid now, is it? No. <laughs> no. Um, and, I and I read an article, the cover cover story. I know I've mentioned this to you before, Drift Glass, but it's important. The cover story on National Geographic magazine this month is about happiness mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, what makes a country happy versus what countries are not happy. And needless to say, the United States is not at the top of the happiness scale. No. Uh, it's Scandinavia overall is is where people are the happiest. And the author of this article uh, decided it was funny and said, isn't this funny that there is a direct correlation in happiness of a population and their access to dentistry mm -hmm. and the ability to go to the dentist because nobody likes going to the dentist. So why would that make people happy? And I was so upset about that for so long. Uh, I told you that it just devastated me to read that right. because dentistry is a sign that your the rest of your health care is secure. Right. And in this country, we don't provide insurance for dentistry. We don't provide uh Medicaid does not cover dentistry above 18, and the people that – there are people in healthcare centers that do sliding scale dentistry, and it is a dismal place to work. Yes. Um, and we know people that want to go into dentistry, and the barrier for going into that in terms of cost and time and so forth – and I realize it's a medical profession, and you have to commit to many years of schooling. I understand mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But – that the lack of ability to help people do that uh, is amazing. And uh, we just don't value people in this country right now. Well, we don't and, value people and, and getting, keep making sure they're healthy. And, and these are um, all problems that human beings, government right. in our country created. Mm -hmm. These are not mm -hmm. insolvable problems. They're very, they're hard to solve. They involve trade-offs. They involve sacrifices. They might involve raising taxes. Well, and they so involve they a powerful group of people. The American Dentistry Association is a very powerful group yes. of people that want their members to have a privileged access to certain things. And mm -hmm. so hiring people to do just do fillings and, and creeping into, you know, cleanings are something that a technician can do. Mm -hmm. But actually fillings are something a technician can do as well if you train them properly. And the 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 wall that dentists want to put up to say, no, our turf is this, mm -hmm. even if it means there's a shortage of those kind of professionals uh, in underserved communities, even if it means that some people never have access to that uh, kind of health care in the United States, uh, is, is unacceptable. We would like to uh, welcome our listeners once again to Dentistry Today. Yeah, right. Dentist <laughs> I, I didn't mean to bore everybody, except no, no. it's all it's all part of exactly a it's, picture. It's, no, the, the dentistry. These in are that, choices that people are making, and, and dentistry in that study is a proxy for fully covered health care. Exactly, exactly, it, it and that was something that the author of the article completely missed. Yeah, uh, and so I also just feel as though. Um, Americans, because we live in the quote unquote wealthiest country on earth and this is God's chosen land and blah, blah, blah. Apparently, we are to have the most stress of any country in the world in terms of our government working against us. And speaking right of, now, that's what that's what it's about. Speaking of which, I'd like to do a quick weekend review. Sure. Don't mind. Uh, Trump Russia, right? Yeah. Well, uh, Trump Russia, yes. Uh, but I do want to do a, a sort of overview okay. of, of your government at work, your tax dollars at work. There are two, <laughs> there are two dozen current and former EPA staffers who uh, explained and believe in Vox how Trump is wrecking the agency, that they're mm -hmm. being told just do the opposite of what you did 18 months ago. They're literally That's just their instruction. Undo. What? Yeah. 
That's their instruction. Yeah, just right. do everything. Um, Donald Trump has said that hundreds more would have mm -hmm. died in Texas if gun laws were tougher mm -hmm. because it's always opposite day in mm -hmm. Trump land. Um, Gary Cohn, uh, who, who's a, a, who, who has said the, the most excited group of, out there are big CEOs about our tax plan. Yeah. And Lindsey Graham has, has – because Lindsey Graham, I think, often uh, very much in the middle of the day likes his cocktails. I'm not sure. <laughs> he gets real chatty around 5 o'clock or so. Uh, yeah. That was a that, apparently that was a Jane Byrne, Mayor Jane Byrne journalism uh, inside knowledge, which uh -huh. if you want to hear Jane Byrne saying some shit, wait until about after three o'clock. And when 520. Gets, yeah. yeah and by she's 520. like, you know what? Let me tell you some more about what I'm going to do in the city. Uh, Lindsey Graham uh, has a job for life. He doesn't care. And he will say he said up front that financial contributions will stop to the Republican Party if the tax reform fails. This is absolutely a tax plan for to rich people to loot from poor and middle class it people. It is for Republican donors. Period. And there he's not the only one that has said that out loud. We you know, our donors are require us to do this, yeah. so we're going to do it. Yep. And the uh the uh, State Department uh is being quote depleted at a dizzying speed, said a foreign service official. Uh, since January, the State Department has lost 60% of its career ambassadors, 42% of its career ministers, and 15% of its ministers' counselors, and the number is still falling. Mm -hmm. Finally, according to the American Bar Association, notoriously liberal American Bar Association, <laughs> one-fourth of all Trump's judicial nominees are absolutely unqualified for the job to which they've been uh, nominated. Hey, I've got an idea for those no-label senators. Yeah. Why don't they pick a qualified, total middle of the road yeah. uh, justice mm -hmm. and appoint and tell Donald Trump that the next time there's a Supreme Court vacancy, they should pick somebody who's just a centrist and totally qualified right. and right down the middle, no labels. Do you have any ideas who that might be? Merrick Garland. Merrick Garland? <laughs> I've heard that name before. Where have I heard that name before, Blue Gal? <laughs> oh, that's right. The extremes on both sides colluded <laughs> to keep Merrick Garland's uh, nomination off the table. No, the no, they didn't. Said, no, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Democrats went out of their way to find a qualified, competent, respected, centrist jurist. And that the Republicans... Mitch McConnell had said lots of nice things right. about in the past. And the Republican Party uh, told him, Stole fuck it. you, go pound sand. We're never going to give you any Supreme Court nominees. And John McCain proudly said that he would hold that seat open until the next Republican president. Didn't care who it was. Even if Hillary Clinton was was president for the next eight years. Now, we'll just hold right? it open. We'll just keep holding it open. That's yeah. why both siderism is bullshit. Is bullshit. <laughs> anyway, Coral Lewandowski, as we mentioned, has been refreshed. Uh, yes. That's what the kids are calling it anyway. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Robert Mueller, apparently Mueller, has enough evidence to charge Mike Flynn and his son as part of the Russia probe. Isn't that exciting? And it was revealed today that Mike Flynn is very concerned about his son's legal exposure. That's right. Which indicates to everybody that he's talking. Yes. yes. And that's – And I, I'm sorry to say, but, you know, you, you want to play hardball? That's what hardball looks like. Yeah. 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 Oh, no. We're, we're going to put your – we're going to put your kid in jail. Mm -hmm. um, and your family's going to be broke because we're going to take all your money away. All your now, military pension is going to go away. That that really is held over people, by the way. Now, yep. do you, now do you want to uh, keep lying for this traitor sack of shit? Because you, right. you're you're free to. You can visit your son every Tuesday. Um, you know, I'm sure after if you if you can find the gas money, yeah. right, yeah. right. Uh, Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross, as we mentioned, <coughs> secretly hung onto his investments in a shipping company tied to Putin's inner circle. Wilbur Ross has more money than God. Uh, apparently not. According oh. to Forbes magazine, he's been lying to Forbes. Oh, no. Lying to Forbes. Lying to Forbes. That's worse than lying to the FBI. It is. And mm -hmm. and it it turns out um, it was super important to him that he be in the Forbes 400, just like it is to Donald Trump. <laughs> That's why they get along so well. Yeah. So he lied to Forbes that he had more money than he did. Uh -huh. He he lied to the IRS that he had less money than he did. And he lied to the federal government in general about everything on his uh, financial disclosure forms mm -hmm. in terms of money that he does have stashed away uh, in the Bank of Cyprus. So, uh, yeah, but, but when it came to uh, talking to Forbes magazine about qualifications for being in the magazine as a rich guy, he had all the money in the world. And they now think that $2 billion that he supposedly transferred over to his daughters uh, to hide from the federal government, 
that that was something he made up to give to Forbes oh. so that they would keep him in the Forbes 400. You know, you know who I'd like to bring into this conversation very quickly? John Rawls. Okay. John Rawls' theory of justice. <laughs> John Rawls' veil of ignorance. You know the veil of ignorance, Blue Gal? I don't. Veil of ignorance, it's a, it's the philosophical, this is, I see, I'm, I'm just bringing up, breaking up a fancy book learning now. Mm -hmm. It's a philosophical, philosophical concept that says, <laughs> if you are essentially, I'm, gonna, I'm sure I'm going to screw it up, but if you have no knowledge of your condition into the condition in which you are born, mm -hmm. um, you can't predict anything. You, you, are, you have a veil of ignorance over the conditions of the life into which you are being born. Okay. What sort of society would you build so that no matter where you land, you'll be okay? So regardless of whether you are a Honduran immigrant yep. coming into the United States without documentation yep. or you're Wilbur Ross, right. but you don't know whether you're either one of those two people or anything in between. What society would be fair? Untouchables in India first, which I realize is illegal, but uh -huh. the, the lowest caste in the world versus the wealthiest white man mm -hmm. in or the wealthiest Chinese investor, whatever. Anything in between, you have no idea who you are, what kind of society would you build so right. that you'd be okay? You'd be you'd be treated fairly. You wouldn't feel mm -hmm. like you're getting screwed. And, okay. and that's the veil of ignorance. That's the that's mm -hmm. the test. The okay. test of a of, of a society that is well constructed and, and equitable mm -hmm. is, you know, if you're given the conditions of your birth don't dictate um, the misery of your life. Right. All right. So let's apply, let's let's challenge our Republican friends to a veil of ignorance test. Mm -hmm. We're going to cover your head. And just read to you the circumstances of Wilbur Ross. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now we're going to tell you. We're not going to tell you what party he's in. We're going to say a commerce secretary lied right. repeatedly during his confirmation hearing about his monetary dependence and ties on a hostile foreign government. Should right. he a be impeached, b be hauled in front of a, a jury and put in jail, or c be given an enormous amount of government power and never asked any more questions? Question two, an attorney general, a nominee for attorney general, repeatedly lies about ties to a foreign hostile power, it is pointed out that he lied, revises his testimony, and swears that he got it all, and then has to keep revising and revising and revising his testimony because he's clearly been lying under oath repeatedly. That person should A, and if you, if you simply divorce it, if you simply make it a free-floating thing, mm -hmm. what should – this is this is the test that, that we sort of – this is this this is how I came to be radicalized mm -hmm, in 2004, mm -hmm. right? Because right. we we set a, the Republicans set a standard for how presidents should be treated in the Clinton administration, right? Right. Absolutely held to the highest possible standard. Uh, if there's the slightest whiff of scandal, we're going to investigate. We're going to crawl right up your ass, even if that whiff comes from a crackpot right wing magazine. Um, anything that even 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 smacks of inappropriateness, we're going to stick a special counselor. If that special prosecutor, if that special prosecutor d clears you, we're going to get another one. And because after all, this is the presidency of the United States of America. Seriously. This is the this has to be taken seriously, right? And, that is the standard. And, that's the standard. and the minute George Bush was appointed president by five Supreme Court justices, five conservative Supreme Court, every bit of that went out the window. That was the moment at which. The media showed itself to be absolutely um, complicit. Complicit, yeah. Because because it was like, wait a minute, didn't you just spend eight years holding that guy to impossibly high standards, and now you're going to let your guy? No, they rolled over. That's the moment when you realize, oh, the whole system is rigged. The whole yeah. fucking system is rigged. And it because just... four deaths in Benghazi requires seven million dollars of investigation on television, and four deaths in Niger, Niger requires zero. And how much how much hell did you put Barack Obama through uh, for 8 years? Yep. Uh, over over his suit and his tie pin and what mustard he used and putting his feet up on the desk. And that's the standard again that the Republican Party set for presidents. Right. And the minute it wasn't the black guy, the minute it was it was the white racist guy who watches the same TV crap they do, there are no standards. And and rather than being whiplashed by this, and going, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, the appropriate media response is the Stephanie Rule response is, he's lying. You're a he's liar. Lying. Why right. is it okay right. with you, that, you know, asking the press secretary, why is it okay with you that your boss lies all the time? Right. What, what, right. Is, it about, what is it about your moral character, um, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, that is so debased 
that you can put yourself through this every fucking day for someone who clearly is a monster. What's mm-hmm. wrong with you? Let's make you the story. Let's ask some yep. questions about yep. what is wrong yep. with you. What fucking malfunctioned in your childhood so badly that you took this job and you're happy with it? That's the story. But mm-hmm. I, I digress. Last but not least, Donald Trump told his CIA director to go talk to a conspiracy mongering crackpot. Right. Because that conspiracy mongering crackpot claimed the DNC emails were leaked, not hacked. Right. Because, and this is just for West Wing fans out there, <laughs> every day is Bizarro Big Block of Cheese Day now. See? Mm-hmm. See? You'll all know what that means. Anyway, yep. Yep. each week. Yep. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Meowth. Meowth. M-E-O- M-E-O-W-T-H. Meowth. And in this picture, Meowth has food on the floor, but he is sitting in the chair because tonight is shrimp fajita night. I don't eat that dry stuff on the floor on shrimp fajita night. I'm in my chair at the table. Right. Let's go, people. We know the children that live in the house with Meowth, and they are very special children. They are very well loved by their amazing parents, and uh, we love them, and we love their parents. They've been longtime podcast supporters and listeners. And uh, that's all I have to say about that, except that the mom and I are kind of soul sisters. So, Meowth, uh, you take care of everybody over there and maybe have some shrimp fajita. (laughs) With that. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based or, you know, milky foam beverage for yourself, (laughs) buy one for us, even if it doesn't have coffee in it. Even if it's pumpkin spice... Uh, Peppermint, we don't care. We don't care. Mm -hmm. We don't care. Uh, Buy one for us. You know, think about how much that costs, and that donation would make a difference to us as we figure out how we're going to pay for our health insurance. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Don't forget our Amazon link at our website. We believe in buying local, and we also believe in shopping Amazon with our link at our website if your alternative is a big box store. It is now time to announce the latest winner of our beautiful bracelet cuff from foxwise.biz. Check out our website to see how great they look. The one we're giving away says resist and has snowflakes on either side with our URL. If you want to buy something from foxwise.biz, which is a woman-owned, liberal-owned business, uh, don't forget to use the coupon code DGBG2017. This is all on our website. If you're driving and listening to us, you don't need to write this down. No, no, don't. But you get 20% off anything, including custom orders, uh, someone wrote me and said that they were thinking about ordering uh, bookmarks for their kids with, and you can do, they have bookmarks and you can put your kids' names on the bookmarks, which I think is very cool. Um, DGBG 2017 gets you 20% off, including custom orders at foxwise.biz. Our winner this week is Curtis H. Curtis H. from California. Curtis is a monthly automatic donor to our podcast mm. through PayPal. Thank you very much, Curtis. Thank you, Curtis. Congratulations. And, uh, we'll have this in the mail to you. We're also sending you a $10 gift certificate to Donors Choose, so you can choose a school that might be in the wildfire area of California or in the flood zones of wherever. Uh, you can send uh, pick a school by geographic location, or as I often do, I pick a classroom that is doing art for autism or doing something uh, related to science fiction, looking for science fiction books for a classroom. We I often send uh, five bucks to that sort of thing. So, uh, Curtis, you're going to get all that in the mail, and we appreciate you and your support of our podcast. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You can, too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are looking forward to burying the GOP fuck you, we're taking it all tax plan in the litter box next to the repeal and fuck you health care plan. Thank you, Drift Glass. My pleasure, Blue Gal. I love you dearly. Love you. And this is so much, I, I have so much fun doing this. I do too. Now come out here and kiss me. Oh, okay, bye. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. 
Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017, Drift Glass, Blue Gal Podcast. Fake news, sparkle farters.